Hi, welcome to this video looking at year two maths from the White Rose Maths okay, website. We're looking at fractions, money, addition and subtraction and place value Okay, in today's video. Okay, as ever, feel free to obviously pause the video, try the question first and then press play when you're ready. Okay, we're going to start with question number one. Match the fractions with their names. So I've got the fraction one over two, so I say one half here. So that's equal to one half. That's one over three or one third, we say. That's going to be that one. And this one's one quarter. Okay, one out of four. Okay, this is question number two. Match the fractions with the correct representations. A half is half of it. Imagine a whole one is 100%. A half is half of it. Okay, a third is one out of three boxes. Whoops. And that leaves this one is one out of four. Okay. do that again. This is question number three. Take the images that show one third. Well, that's one third and that's one third. Okay, so this one and this one. This one's actually one quarter. Okay, because one out of four parts is shaded. Now this one, although one out of three parts is shaded, they are not equal sizes if i say that that's equal to a third okay that means this part can't equal a third even though if i just shade this part in that'll be one out of three okay and conversely they are not the same size so i can't have that one okay and i can't have this one okay that's not equal size we say okay so they're not equal size That one. Okay, this is question number four. Shade the fractions given in the grid. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've got twelve boxes, and I want to shade in half of twelve. A half of twelve is going to be six boxes. So I'm going to shade in one, two, three boxes, four, five, six, okay, because this is the idea that a half is the same as six twelfths, okay, because if I multiply top and bottom by six, it's still the same fraction. It's what I call an equivalent fraction. Okay, they are the same. Okay, it's the same size. Six out of 12 gives me the same answer as one out of two. Okay, that's equal to a half. Okay, because you've got six boxes, six are coloured in, and six are not. Okay, next one. How many have I got here? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Well, a third of twelve is four. So I'm going to shade in four boxes. Okay. This one, I'm going to shade in a quarter. Again, it's a quarter of twelve. So I'm going to shade in three boxes. Okay, a quarter of twelve means divide it into four pieces. Okay, or four parts. Okay, a quarter of something means divide it by four. And a third of something means divide by three. Okay, and a half of something means divide by two. Okay, if we're ever unsure. Okay, so I thought I'd put this on the side. Okay, same as dividing by four. This is question number five. Here are some cubes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whitney takes half of the cubes. How many cubes does Whitney take? Well, a half means divide it by two. So eight 
divided by 2, we get the answer of 4. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, 4 cubes have been taken by Whitney. Ron takes a quarter of the cubes. How many cubes does Ron take? Well, I'm going to divide it by 4. So, 8 divided by 4. Which is 2. So, Ron takes 2 cubes. Okay, so imagine Ron's colour is blue. Okay, Ron takes 2. This is question number six, guys. Dexter says a half is the same as two over four or two quarters. Okay, do you agree? Explain your answer. You can shade in the grids to help you. Well, if we look here, guys, okay, we're looking at equivalent fractions here. We are introducing the idea of equivalent fractions. I am timesing the top, i.e. the numerator, by two. Whatever I times the top by, I must times the bottom by the same multiplier, okay, the same number. 2 times 2 is 4. So, Dexter is correct, okay. So, do you agree? Yes, I agree, okay, because they are what we call equivalent fractions, okay. That's the key word to remember, okay. If you think about that's equal to half, okay, and 2 quarters... Okay, if you imagine that this is like a window, let's say, it's like half of the window has been shaded, okay, so that implies that they are the same, okay, because it's still the same size box, that's just been split into more parts, okay, so it's still taking up the same size, okay, or same amount, you could say, okay, it's just been, it's just, this has gone a bit further, and it's gone like this, century, okay, and that's now turned into that, and that should help you visualise that this and this is the same as this and this, okay, for that question, okay, so hopefully that makes sense, these are what are called equivalent fractions, Okay, we are now at the end of this section, so please circle how confident you feel with fractions now after watching this part of the video. Okay, we are now looking at year two money from the White Rose Maths okay, website. Okay, so looking at key stage one, key stage two level maths. Okay, question number one, count the money. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, I've got twelve P, this one I've got ten, twenty, two, three, I've got twenty three pence, okay, so ten pence, ten pence is twenty pence, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, Okay, this is question number two. Mo has this coin. Alex has these coins. Who has the most money? Well, Alex has 30 pence and Mo has 50 pence. 50 pence is bigger than 30 pence. Therefore, Mo has more money or the most money out of them too. Okay. So, Mo actually has 20p more than Alex, okay? Just to add to that part of the question. This is question number three. Match the money to the correct amount. Okay, two, four, five. That's equal to five pound. Okay, five, ten. Five at five is ten. And that's a 20 pound note. Okay, and they are two five pound notes. Five times two is ten, or five at five is ten. That's a two pound coin, a two pound coin, if you can't see it very well. A one pound coin, two plus two is four, and the one is five. This is question number four. Take the coins that make 61 pence. Okay, well, I can do 20, 40, 50, 60. 61, okay, so I'm going to tick this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, okay, 
An alternative method is, so a different way of doing it, I'm, I'm going to change colour now just to be explicitly clear, I can do 50p, 10p and 1p, so that's another way of doing it, but obviously I thought I'd change the colour, sorry, 50p, 10p and 1p, okay, so there are multiple different ways of getting to your answer, okay, as long as you make an accumulation of 61 pence, okay, so you make 60 pence and then 1 pence, 60 pence can be made by doing a multiple different things, okay, so they, they are two different ways of getting the same answer. Okay, this is question number five. A bag costs thirty-five pounds. A coat costs sixty-two pounds. How much more does the coat cost? Okay, sixty-two. Take away thirty-five. No matter how much space here, so I'll have to do it on the side. Okay, two take away five. I can't do so. I exchange. I borrow. That becomes a five. That becomes a one. Twelve take away five is seven. And five take away three is two. So the coat costs 27 more pounds than the bag. This is question number six, guys. Complete the part whole models. Seven pound, okay, three pound is going to go there. So the idea of these models is that these two numbers add to give me this number here. So ten pound take away seven pound gives me three pound. Here, 20p, okay, I've got a pound. Imagine it's a hundred pence here, just obviously help you out. Okay, hundred pence take away 20 pence is 80 pence, okay, or you could say that 80 pence plus 20 pence is a pound, okay, 100 pennies is the same as one pound, okay, when we write it like this, okay, but obviously in this day and age, we, we tend to avoid writing things in penny coins, okay, unless an item or items cost less than a pound, then it might be presented in pence, okay, but generally speaking, it will be in that pound form, or that decimal pound. This is question number seven. Eva has 80 pence. Dora has 12 more pence than Eva. Circle the coins that Dora has. Okay, so 92 pence Dora has. So Dora will have 50 60, 70, okay, 80, 90, 92 pence, okay, this is question number 8, Emir has 4 different coins in his money box, he has less than 60 pence altogether, take the 4 different coins which could be in his money box, so he has a total of less than 60p, okay, so 20, 30, 31, 33, 33 is less than 36, therefore he is correct. This is question number 9, here is a cafe price list for sandwiches. Tommy buys two sandwiches. The total cost is 65 pence. Which two sandwiches did he buy? Okay, so one way of working this out, okay, is trial and error. Or the second way is, if we look at the end numbers, so the end number needs to add to give me a five. So if I do 32, plus 33 so it's a little trick here so rather than doing trial and error i look at the end digit and i say okay well i've got to make a five okay from two of these numbers two plus three is five and three plus three is six so he had a cheese okay and a jam sandwich Okay, 
Next one, Rosie buys a jam sandwich. She pays with a single coin. She receives 17 pence change. What coin did she use to pay? Well, she used 50 pence. Because if I do 33 pence and 17 pence, I get 50 pence, okay, using column addition. And if we're not sure there, I'll do a quick working out here. Okay, 33 plus 17. Well, 3 plus 7 is 10. So 0, carry this extra 1 down here. Okay, 3 plus 1 plus 1 is 5. Okay, so I'm carrying that extra 1 there. But I'll put the 1 just here, actually, uh, just to make it a bit clearer. Then we're not getting confused with this one here. Right guys, so that is the end of the money section, so please do go ahead and circle how confident you feel with money now on a scale of 1 to 5. Okay, we're now looking at year 2, addition and subtraction. This is question number 1, okay, from the White Rose Maths Worksheet, okay, website. Complete the pothole numbers, 18 take away 7 is 11. 2 plus 6 plus 4, well 6 plus 4 is 10, plus that 2 is 12. Okay, this is question number 2. Use the bar model to complete the number sentence. 7 plus 18 is 25. And 25 take away the 7 is 18. Okay. Imagine I'm going to cut a bit off 25 there. What's left is 18. Okay. This is question number three. Complete the missing boxes. Okay, 10 less. And I've got the number. Okay, so. If you look here, how much have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 okay so we've got 103 okay that's my number okay so 10 more would be 113 okay add into the tens column and 10 less would be 93 okay interested okay here, if you look, the number is 15, 10 more is 25, 10 less is 5. I'm going to write it in words here, okay, if you're interested. Okay, but it's the number 5 here, the number 15 here, and the number 25 there. Okay, in case you are wanting the numerical values as well, or versions. Okay, this is question number 4. Jack makes this number, so how many have I got here? 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I've got 10. Twenty, twenty-one. Okay, I think I might have made a mistake here, guys. Sorry, now that I think about it. It should be the number 13. Sorry, because I was, I was treating that as the 100. Sorry, I apologise. So the number here should be the number 3, which is 3 blocks. And then 10 more than 13 is 23. So I apologise for that. I was treating this as a 100. Sorry, I thought I was treating it as 10 blocks. Okay, but each one is that like one unit block. Okay, essentially. So Jack has this number. Meg makes this number. 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, 35. What is the total of the numbers? So add it together. 1 plus 5 is 6. And 2 plus 3 is 5. Okay, make sure that we put all the numbers in the correct place value when I add it. Okay, so this is how I got 56. 1 plus 5 is 6. And 2 plus 3 is 5. This is question number 5. Emilia is working out 55 minus 8. He uses a number line. 55 take away 5 is 50. Complete Emilia's method. Well, I've got to take off 
three more, okay, yeah, because taking away eight is the same as taking away five and then taking away three. So Emir's answer would be 47. But the question just says complete his method. But if you want to, you are welcome to write down the answer as well. The answer is 47. This is question number six. Circle the two numbers that total, which total 100. Total means sum, so I add the numbers together. Well, it's going to be 35. And 65 okay for that one this is question number seven dan has 28 grapes he eats 12 of them how many are left well if i do 28 take away 12 8 take away 2 is 6 and 2 take away 1 is 1 so there are 16 grapes that are left okay this is question number eight. Here are three digit cards. Okay, four, six, and seven. Okay, use the cards to find two different ways to complete the number sentence. Well, if I do seven plus 46, okay, here. Okay. So that's one way of doing it. Can we do another way to make 53? So I don't think we can, can we? Okay, so that's one way of doing it. What's going to have 7 plus 46 again? Okay. I don't know if I've made a mistake here because it says two different ways. So I think the answer should be, another way of writing it, is 46 plus 7. Okay, so we're going to have 0 tens and 7 units. Okay, that's another way of writing it. Okay, so 46 plus 7. Okay, that's a different way of writing the answer. Now, I'm not sure if it's wanting a number per box. If it is, then this is not going to make full sense. But 46 plus 7 units is 53. And 7 plus 46 is 53. Okay. So it's to do with understanding rewriting sums in the same way. What it's trying to say is 7 plus 46 is the same as 46 plus 7. Okay, this is what it's trying to get at. Okay, these two things mean the exact same thing. Okay, because they both give an answer of 53. Okay, right guys, please circle, okay, how confident you are feeling with addition and subtraction now, okay, and let me know. Okay, this is looking at year two place value assessment from the White Rose Maths website. This is question number one. How many cookies are there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So there are 14 cookies all together. How many cakes are there all together? We've got 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So we're going to have 35. There, okay. This is question number two. Match the numerals to the correct word. 13 is pronounced like this. 13. Thirteen, okay. Thirty is pronounced like that. Okay, thirty. This one is thirty-three, so we can clearly see there thirty, and then dash, and then a three. Okay, this is question number three. Complete the part whole numbers. Well, forty plus five is forty-five. Six plus thirty is thirty-six. Okay. 
This is question number four. Circle the greatest number. Okay, so the greatest number, the biggest number is 33. Okay, when we look at our place value, so we look at our tens column, which is the biggest 10, the biggest 10 here is 3. It doesn't matter what happens after the tens column, okay, but if the biggest tens, okay, column is 3, then that will be the biggest number out of them all, okay. This is question number five. Complete the boxes to make the statements correct. One more than 35 is 36. Okay, so we add one to the units column. Okay, 10 less than 72. So we take off one from the tens column. So the sevens and I get 62. Okay. If we're not sure about that, actually, because it's just important. So I'd write like this, okay, using column addition. Six sorry 35 plus 1 5 plus 1 is 6 and then this is my tens column 3 plus nothing okay so this is my tens and this is my units or my ones column okay it might be referred to but we generally say units column this one is saying 72 take away 10 okay so we're taking away 10 Okay, 2 take away 0 is 2, 7 take away 1 is 6. Okay, just in case that you are not sure at how I got my answer for that one. Okay, this is question number 6. Draw more counters on the tens frame so Eva's number and Jack's number are the same. Okay, so Eva's got 10, 20, 24 Eva's got. Okay, we've got 10 here. 20, 21, so 22, 23, 24, okay, and I can just pull them in if I wanted to, okay, I wouldn't worry a lot about me clearing in here, because obviously it's focusing on the maths more rather than like, yeah, like the drawing and the arty skills, but yeah, something like that, okay, for red counters. Okay, this is question number seven. Draw an arrow to show the number 35 on the number line. Well, it's going to be tens. 10, 20, 30, 40. 35 is bang in the middle. Okay, so that's where 35 is. Okay, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So it's going up in tens. Okay, if I'm not sure. So each little bar. Is going up in ten. Okay, seventy, eighty, ninety, and a hundred. Okay. This is question number eight. Which word completes the sentence correctly? Three tens is something than two tens and twelve ones. Well, that's actually less than, okay, because twelve ones means another ten and two units. So this number here is actually thirty two. And this number here is, is actually 30. 30, we say, is less than. So we can use this little symbol, less than, okay, 32. Okay, write a number to make the statement correct. So 32 is less than something and less than 40. So the number here is bigger than 32, but less than 40. So I'm going to go ahead actually and just write in 35, okay? But it can be 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. And if you really are one of pushing yourself here, then decimals can also count here as well. So I can even have 33.1, let's say. Okay. If you really wanted to push up here and, and start to under, in, uh, introduce decimals here, then that is also correct. But we will stick with just whole numbers for now, okay? Right, guys, um, please do go ahead actually and circle how confident you're feeling with um, place value, okay, after watching this section. Okay, 
So this is going to be the last part for today's video, okay, looking at, okay, year two time from the White Rose Maths, okay. Question number one, match each time to the time shown on the clock. Well, this is actually half past 12, so it's going to go here. Okay, this is showing me 9 o'clock, because the hour hand, so the small part is what I call the hour hand, the big hand is what I call the minutes, okay, that's equal to 6 o'clock, okay, and that's half past 9, okay. This is question number two. Write the time shown on each clock. Use the words to help you. Well, this is what I say, quarter past one. Okay, we say. Okay, excuse my handwriting there, guys, I apologise. So, quarter past one, we say. This is quarter to one. Okay, so the, if the large hand is on the nine, we say it's quarter to the hour. Okay. And we see here that it's quarter past one. But if you're interested, that we that is written as one fifteen, okay, and this will be written as twelve forty five. Okay, if you're interested for like the numbers part, okay, this part is quarter past ten. So we say it's ten fifteen, okay, or quarter past ten. Okay. Okay, that question. We're now on question number three, guys. Draw the hands on the clock to show each time. So five minutes past nine, the hour hand goes to that, and the, sorry, the, the minute hand goes there, and then the hour hand goes like that. Okay, 20 to 8, so that's actually equal to 740, you could say, okay, so 40 minutes past goes here, okay, and the hour hand, now because of these, like, passivity, the hour hand goes in between seven and eight, okay, obviously a bit smaller, okay, it doesn't go on seven, because the, the idea of a clock is, as the minutes hand go around the clock for every hour, the hour hand moves at a proportion that is the same rate for the number of minutes that I rotate by, if that makes sense, so, five past nine here okay the hour hand is still technically on the nine because it's only gone a few minutes past nine but when i go like a quarter of an hour or 20 past hour or 25 past an hour then the hour hand starts to move and it doesn't actually stay on that okay because it it doesn't go nine then ten okay when it goes to the hour so the hour hand is still moving but it moves at a slower rate a slower proportion we say but it follows the slow proportion based on the hour uh, on the minutes hand if that makes sense so for every minute that i move the hour hand in theory moves by like a small amount now you might not be able to see that like every minute but if you look back every 15 minutes actually or even every 10 minutes the hour hand will start to move okay a bit okay let's just read that there oops we're not getting close yeah okay this is question number four a machine fills one box every minute. How many boxes does it fill in one hour? Well, there are 60 minutes in an hour, so it fills 60 boxes. This is question number five. Order the times from the shortest to the longest. Okay, so five minutes is the shortest. Then it goes half an hour because half an hour is 30 minutes.
Let it lose 42 minutes. Okay. I'm going to write mins here just to be a bit lazy. And I do apologise. But it's minutes. Okay. So when I write 42 mins, it means from short for minutes. Okay. And then it's one hour. And one hour is 60 minutes. Okay. Right, guys, question number six. Jane sets off to school at seven o'clock. She arrives at the school 25 minutes to eight. Okay, so 25 minutes to eight means that the big hand that lands on this seven. Okay, so how long did it take her, or how long was Jane's journey? It was 35 minutes. Okay, so it takes Jane 35 minutes. Okay, to set off, I'm assuming, from her house to school, okay, or from a location to school, okay. Right, guys, okay, so please do go ahead, actually, and circle how confident you feel with time now after watching this, okay. Right, guys, if you made it to the end, okay, thank you so much for watching, okay, please do subscribe to the channel, okay, drop the video a like, and click that bell icon so you don't miss out on future videos for Key Stage 1, Key Stage 2, and the occasional Key Stage 3 and GCSE Maths, okay, but this channel is predominantly for primary level maths, okay, so we're looking at year 1 to year 6 work, okay, possibly a bit of year 7 work, year if we're pushing it but i want to focus this channel on primary level maths okay okay but thank you so much for watching okay take care guys stay safe enjoy your easter holidays and i'll catch up with you on the next video bye bye for now